Welcome back to 101 East. We're talking today to the Prime Minister of Cambodia, Hun Sen. You spoke earlier about the importance of the use of land in the development of Cambodia and the allotment of land and the ownership of land amongst foreigners and locals. Um, there is a, a growing amount of protest about the distribution of this land. Is there a problem with land rights and how do you plan to deal with those people who complain that they are being robbed of their land? In this issue, in the history of Cambodia, the value of land equals zero. In the period of the Liberation Day in 1979, at the time, if you wanted to have 100 or 200 villas in Phnom Penh, you could have it. There was no one fighting for it. But when a country has achieved peace, the land becomes very expensive everywhere. Land disputes arise and land grabbing occurs. But let me inform you that in Cambodia, there are millions of families. Among those, how many families have land disputes? I think maybe 99% have security of land ownership as they have land titleship and receive land distribution since the 80s. Therefore, for them, this is not an issue. You've said that you want to stay on until you are 90, but eventually there will be change. Do you want to choose a successor? The training of the young generation has been a gradual ongoing process. They have now been placed within the existing structures. We have trained more than 2,000 already, between 20 and 30 years old. Now they are working, but we still have not singled out any of them. And the decision will be made by the top two leaders and the small group of select leaders, should the unexpected happen. But we do hope that there will be no unwanted coincidences. Do you see any of your family following you into politics in Cambodia? For my son, I've encouraged him to avoid political issues. He studied in the States at the Military Academy in New York and he studied in Bristol, United Kingdom. And now he has returned to serve in the army. So he's not involved in politics and I think that I won't arrange for him to walk in my footsteps. Let him work in the public affairs sector. It will be better to not get involved with politics. The ECCC, um, the work they have done over the past three years <coughs> has progressed very rapidly. However, we have reached a point where the court is running out of money and running out of time. And they are saying that they need more of both. Can you help? Can you offer more money? And how do you think um, you can conclude this episode of Cambodian history. This is the issue in which the world should share responsibility because they want us to conduct a prosecution. We've completely fulfilled our obligations. <coughs> On the contrary, everyone made a promise to give money. Now they are saying that there is a budget shortage I think that this is the obligation of Cambodia plus the international community. But as you already know, Cambodia is a poor country and our help is limited. We request that our foreign friends involved in this issue and who promise to help to join us to be responsible so that this court will be successful. What, what will happen then if Cambodia cannot help anymore and the foreign donors cannot help anymore? Where will this process finish? I think that this issue brings us to the key issue that if the foreigners withdraw, 
the matter has to be vested with Cambodia to carry out the prosecution, according to what the law and the agreement prescribes. Your view on international relations, is your relationship with the United States um, a satisfactory one and will that change with the new president? Uh, and who will be your most important um, and international partners in the future? Will it be the US or China or Vietnam? Let me inform you that the foreign policies which I have been implementing so far the important matter here does not specifically refer to who are the important partners or not important partners. All are important. Cambodia is making friends with all countries based on the principle of respecting the independence and sovereignty of each other. Therefore, the relationship with the United States, we can say that it is at its peak in the history of Cambodia-United States relations. Before, there was no U.S. embassy in Phnom Penh. But now, the United States has a good embassy in Phnom Penh and also a good business relationship with Cambodia. With regards to who will be elected in the United States, it's up to the Americans. We will keep in contact with everyone who works in the White House. What is the future of Cambodia's monarchy? The monarchy in Cambodia won't change. The constitution prohibits anything that affects the monarchy. Any constitutional amendments must not affect the multi-party liberal democracy and the constitutional monarchy. The newspapers are all talking about possible abdication of the present king. This is only a rumor which happens within the environment. But it's very clear that the present king will not be abdicate. On this issue, I met with him several times. He has requested that I help protect the royal throne. I agreed on one condition, that he will not announce his resignation and not abdicate. He stressed that he won't because the constitution does not mention abdication or retirement. But there was a special case in 2004 of Kim Norodom Sihanouk when he retired. But our constitution clearly states that the king is the head of the state for life. Can I ask you one quick question about your neighbor, Myanmar? The situation there, according to international observers, is a desperate one. What would you say needs to be done to make sure that the people of Myanmar um, are helped to recover from this situation? <coughs> Our foreign minister had a meeting with ASEAN and the United Nations and the other partners on this issue. We have appealed to Myanmar to open its doors for international donations for the problems that resulted from the storm and the reconstruction of those affected areas. We hope that Myanmar will create a good atmosphere for those willing to help Myanmar citizens. This is all we can ask. So you, so you agree that Myanmar is not doing enough? Frankly speaking, I'm dismayed and still not satisfied with this issue. A few days after the situation, I appealed that the attention should not be focused on political issues, both on the side of the aid donors and the Myanmar government. We have to work in a way possible to help the people, but unfortunately, the planes and ships loaded with aid 
from different countries are not allowed to enter the affected areas. This makes me feel very horrified with what is happening, but it seems that no serious attention is being paid to the situation. Even though our foreign friends are prepared to provide aid, they face difficulties in getting visas. I think that Myanmar should seriously consider helping the victims. Prime Minister, thank you very much. Thank you.